What's up, guys? Brett Okamoto from ESPN, joined by manager Ali Abdelaziz, who is in New York in Newark uh, for UFC 288 this week. Um, a lot of fighters on the card, a lot of fighters in the main and co-main event. You got two guys who you represent fighting each other in the co-main event. That fight came together on short notice. Gilbert Burns, Bilal Muhammad. Um, man, you, you're known as a guy of high fashion. It looks like you're cutting weight over there. That looks like a plastic suit that you're wearing over there in Newark. <laughs> It's a, it's a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just it probably just looks that way because of uh, how it looks on camera. But it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you over there in Newark. Um, let's start with the main event. Henry Cejudo coming back after three years off. Can you give us an idea of just, I mean, I think when Henry retired, a lot of people kind of thought maybe he might come back. Um, but it also looks like he definitely went into just a normal lifestyle. Can you give us an idea of what he's been through over the last, you know, six months, year to, to get ready for this, uh, this championship fight? I feel Henry's been competing since like 10 years old, or eight years old, uh, for 20 some years. I and mean, I think he needed some time off, you know, but it, it was active rest. You know, he, he didn't just take a completely off maybe for the first six months, you know, he's, he's, he's seen coaching guys, you see him. Uh, and you know, for the last year, uh, he's been trained nonstop, and I and I truly believe this. When you start coaching uh, as a coach, and you are at the same time as an athlete, you become twenty five percent better or thirty percent better because a lot of this mistake you do it as an athlete, as a fighter. Now, when you teach it, it's embedded in your brain. It, you know what you do right and you, what you do wrong, right? And honestly, yesterday I see him work out and. And I, I truly believe this is the best Henry I, I've seen. And I'm not just saying that to promote a fight or, uh, or, or to anything differently. He, he's just become a master of everything, you know. Of course, you know, he fights in Aljo. I think Aljo is a very tough opponent. Aljo has to prove something to, to us. You know, I feel like Henry can prove everything. And he's coming back to just be like, hey, I'm the guy I've been talking about. I'm the guy who want to beat Omali and want to go fight Alexander Valnowski and be, uh, tri uh, you know, he, he is cringy. He is there. But I'm going to tell you why. I, I spoke to him about it. So why are you so cringy? And he said, I like to put pressure on myself. And I talk all this nonsense stuff. I put myself in very, I have to deliver. Because if I don't, people will bury me. And I believe, I believe him 100%. Because when you have a normal conversation with Henry, he is funny, he is witty. But he's, uh, he, he's one of a kind, man. I, I don't think anybody... As a, as a greatest comeback at all, all the time, he is. At the level, the UFC fighting. You know, the UFC is uh, it's the best of the world, best, man. It's the machine fighting the machines. It's, 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 it's a who is who, you know. And he beat him so many legends, you know. He making him look average. TJ De La Chai destroyed him. Dominic uh, Cruz, he make him look like a pizza man. Dominic Cruz do not, do not look like a fighter in this fight. He make him look, look like a guy who's getting on a bike, delivering a pizza, and he got beat up by the customer, you know, mm -hmm. because the customer didn't like how he looks like, you know, and, uh, and I feel, you know, if he beat Aljo, you know, he's going to make him look bad too. I don't think this is going to be a close fight, saga, dumb. I think this is a fair finish. Uh, I think Henry, she, Henry can stop him uh, under two rounds. And it's, it's obviously that, a very, very important main event crucially important co-main event, um, you know, putting this fight together, I'm sure that both of these guys needed certain um, extras, right? Whether it was whether it was compensation or whether it was like a guarantee, whether it was like a, hey, why am I going to take this fight? Why is Gilbert Burns going to fight another co-main event so quickly? Why is Bilal Muhammad going to take a five-round fight coming right off Ramadan, you know, and he didn't have anything scheduled? So, what are the stakes of this fight? You know, like, what do you, can, can the winner jump ahead of Colby Covington? Can, is the winner guaranteed the title shot in their next appearance? What do you think the winner gets out of this fight? Listen, you know, the way this fight come along, like Bilal tweeted something and I thought about it. You know, Bilal is like, he's one of these guys, can't get a big name. Gilbert Burton is a big name. Gilbert Burton fought for a world title. Gilbert Burton, uh, Dana was saying he's next, right? Uh, and I spoke to Sean Sheldon. I was like, hey, what do you think about making this fight? And he said, yeah, but it's going to be difficult. It's going to be easier. And I thought, you know, um, me and Sean talked. He talked to Dana and they all talked. And it, it was very easy, you know. It wasn't extra stuff. You know, of course, everybody tried to ask for extra money and extra stuff like that. But, you know, everybody's happy. I think Bilal needed respect. 
more than anything. And, I, you know, Dana did meet him with him. Dana doesn't meet this many people anymore. You know, the guy, he doesn't need to, to be honest. And he gave him respect. And some of these fighters, man, feel they're not respected. But it doesn't mean they want to put you in a different match or they don't respect you. They respect you, you know. And I feel like, you know, uh, I got to give credit to Sean Shelby, man. He, he, you know, he made this happen. Uh, it was, it was, uh, you know, who to Dana, and you know, of course, everybody's involved in the office. You know, Hunter, Dana, and Sean, they all talk, and and um, Gilbert didn't ask for anything. He said, "I just want to fight." You know, Gilbert. He said, I, I, I. "Gilbert is a guy, man. He fought Masvidal, didn't ask for anything. Uh, he fought Gil- Balal, didn't ask for anything. Uh, and guys like that, they they always get taken care of. You know, yeah. they always get yeah. taken care of." some other ways, not only financially, and it is financially too, but, you know, we don't hold anybody hostage here, you know, and I feel there's nobody in the UFC or Bellator or PFL should not get done because money, and I hate that, and I, and I get criticized sometimes by, by UFC or why try to save the night, why do you have to be the white knight? I'm not. I feel this fight is good for Bellal, this fight is good for Gilbert. Mm-hmm. They're the best of the best. Dana White never come out and say this number one contender match. He said it's a number one contender match. Kobe Covington, I feel Kobe uh, did something for him to deserve his title shot. I feel, you know, to me, and I'm also, I'm, I'm kind of like assuming things. You know, you see Masvidal fought, come step in and fought, and you see Kobe, Kobe's a backup. Sergey Popovich was the backup, but Sanji Luko was the backup. They didn't get a title shot because, but I feel Kobe, you know, he decided to be a man and drop the charges uh, mm-hmm. or maybe drop the lawsuit against Masvidal. Uh, but, you know, but we know Kobe Covered is a, he's a coward. You know, he, you know, he talked all this stuff and uh, whatever Masvidal did to him, he, he deserved it. He earned it. I think it'll be pretty obvious, though. The winner of this fight um, will be right there in line to to fight for the championship next. Another guy who's right there in line, even though he's lost to Leon twice in his last two fights, is Kamaru. I spoke to him this week. You know, he said he is he he does want that fourth fight. You know, as his manager, and you hear that. I mean, of course, uh, he's he's targeting the championship. He still wants to, to win the championship. He also said he wanted to fight Hamzat, which I think is a pretty pretty cool fight. Kamara was in one of those situations, right? We've seen it in the sport where it's like your your options almost they they expand, but they also are kind of limited because he's a certain guy. There's only certain fights that make sense for him. What do you think makes sense for Kamara? How do you see it playing out with him? Well, listen, I never said that to him. Uh, I watched his fight a couple of days ago. I believe Kamara is two to one over Lane. I believe he beat him the last fight. This is my opinion. You know, maybe I'm biased, mm-hmm. whatever. And I feel. Out of this whole fight, Leon won two, two minutes of the fight, whatever, you know. Uh, but, you know, listen, Camaro is still the greatest welterweight of all the time. I believe he's one of the best pound for pound ever. You know, Camaro get to do what Camaro wants, you know, you know what, what Camaro wants. And him and Dana met and they talk, and, and he, this guy's respect Camaro, you know. And for him to go out there and say, fight comes out one of the toughest matches in the division. That show you who Kamaru is. You yeah. understand? But at the end of the day, we don't know who Hamzad is coming back to middle welterweight or not. He's almost two sixteen. You know, this is a big fight, and uh, you know it was talked about catch weight, uh, stuff like that. But you know, Dana said I'll do anything for you, but I do not do catch weight fight in the UFC. And honestly, I understand it. I respect it. But in a way, uh, you know, what do you guys want me to do? You know, I want Kamara to go up and win a middle weight title. I think he can, but he have his friends. He said he don't want to fight him. But, you know, listen, I think, and, and one thing about Kamara, man, this guy, you know, something is going on with him. Because when, when he's in Vegas, he trains two times a day. When he's in Denver, he's training. He just find something, something click. Maybe he can't take it. He's not the champion anymore. Maybe he hit the loss. But I, I had to do grapple, turn around with this animal, you know. And I'm telling you, man, he's, this guy is so good. He's so strong age did not show on him you know he's and he's not he's old i'm not saying he's old but he's just a, he's just a different animal man listen if kobe win it's going to be interesting because he's he's two and oh against kobe yeah. you know it's going to be interesting but you know you know the only thing i see maybe if wonder boy go out there and knock 
his opponent out, do something. This is a fight never really happened. This mm -hmm. is from the old kind of generation. Yeah. It's, it's, I, think, I feel it's, it's a big fight. I think, uh, you know, interesting with Wonder Boy style. I think Kamar be there too. I'm not saying Wonder Boy is going to, but I feel it's, it's an interesting fight. He, he fought two times for the title. He had a great performance last time. Uh, and if he go out there and put on a great performance, I think Wonder Boy, you know, and Kamaru can make it happen. Let's talk about the lightweight division kind of as a whole, because you have Islam Makachev, you have Justin Gaethje, and you have Benil Dariush. And to me, it seems pretty clear. Benil wins against Charles. You cannot deny the man anymore, right? So he would get the title shot. If Benil were to come up short, well, then I don't know what happens. I, I, I have no idea. What I, I, I'm not I'm not even going to say Benil is not going to come short. I think Benil is going to go out there and is going to make Charles Alvaro look like an amateur. And mm -hmm. he, I'll tell you something, Benil Darush, he's one of the greatest lightweight ever. I'm telling you, he is this guy. You see him, I, I'm very high on Gamra, and you see how he treated Gamra. You know, he treated him like he doesn't belong in there with him. Uh, Charles Alvarez is getting rolled up. Uh, June 11 in Canada and Benny is going to fight Islam Makhachev in Abu Dhabi. I believe Islam is my brother too. I love him. But I believe this is the biggest fight in the lightweight division. It's skills. Skills level. They're the best. They're the best. And I train with both guys and I know what every guy do. And these two guys it, it's a it's a very even Habib. Habib is, is real. He said it's Islam is tough as fight. You know, yeah. Yeah. we can go out there and see one of them make it look easy, but yeah. on papers, this yeah. is the fight, you know. And you know, listen, the guys like Benil get the long road, guys like Habib and Islam will get the long road. We haven't seen this Khabib to the end when Habib say, you know what, I'm gonna talk. And uh, we see his charismatic and, and Islam too, Islam is funny too. Benil refused to be not this guy, you understand? You know, he's just him. He said, I'm gonna be me. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to do this kind of stuff. But I'm with, every time you go there and there in the cage, I'm going to whoop you. And I'm going to whoop you really bad. You have to respect me. Yeah, well, it, like, like you said, Benil doesn't want to uh, turn into a character and talk trash or anything. But he has earned so much respect from people because he just keeps saying yes to fights, even fights that you don't want him to take. His wife doesn't want him to take. He keeps just saying yes to these hard, tough fights. And he's continued to win them. And so, yeah, I... I let, let me tell you how crazy Benil is. We were sitting, uh, it was in Hunter's office, I believe, in, uh, or Sean's office, I don't remember. And he, and uh, the, the news broke, Armand Sarukian lost his opponent. He's like, oh, what about our fight, Armand Sarukian? And after that fight, uh, 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 Oliveira again. I was like, no. And he said, what do you mean? I said, no. And after that, and even UFC said, no, it, it make no sense for you. You know, they almost kind of felt like, hey, we respect you. We we respect you. It's okay. You don't have to do that. You know. Yeah. But he was willing to fight Armand. And Armand is bro. This guy, he can be a future world champion. He, sure. he Armand is good. You know. Mm -hmm. But in reality, man, I, he's just a different breed. Um, when, when when you're gonna appreciate Benil when Benil leave, people mm -hmm. doesn't appreciate him now, right? I don't think people appreciated Habib when he was here. When he left, we were wow. This guy was so dominant. He didn't mm -hmm. even get punched in fights, right? And, uh, and that's it, man, you know, I, I believe Islam, man, Islam, and Islam is a handful, man. Islam, I think one of the best fighters in the UFC is Kills Lahu, yeah. we're around him. And yeah. this is why I said him and Benil, they're so good, both of them, mm -hmm. we in it for a treat. Yeah, in, I agree. But I agree for a treat. Agree. Where do you think that leaves Gaethje? I mean, the obvious answer is Poirier. You, 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 you believe that that fight's going to happen? Have there been talks I, about that fight? You know, uh, <laughs> You know, have to. The first fight was was, was, a, was a great fight. Uh, this is the two guys who is winning. You know, coming. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's pure violent. You know, it's pure violent. We see Gagishi, and Gagishi is getting better, man. This guy is wrestling, he's grappling, his his strategy, and you know, he have one of the best coaches in the game. You know, Trevor Whitman. It's a, it's 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 he's just a different level of a guy. He knew how to adjust. You know. And uh, we see my last fight, we see violence, just engaged, but was very methodical, mm -hmm. right? And he beat a good guy, man. Fazif is a, is a killer. And mm -hmm. the way he make him look like, he make him look like he doesn't belong. In the second and third round, he make him look like he didn't belong. With him. We saw how his face looked. Normally you see just engaged for, you know, like beat up and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, just engaged, he didn't get hit much in this one. You know, mm -hmm. and 
He didn't take as much damage. I like it because when you don't, when you don't take this much damage, um, it's good. I like it. I don't like my guys take damage. I don't like any fight to take damage. I feel this fight should be the co main event and Islam Makhachev versus uh, the Neil fight. Uh, oh, wow. Versus Islam. I think. Send Gaethje to, uh, to Abu Dhabi again, huh? Yeah, he doesn't, he's not going to like it. Let me take it back. <laughs> Let me take it back. Let me take it back. How yeah. about um, a guy I haven't asked you about in a minute is uh, Magomed Ankalaev. How, how about uh, Ankalaev? What's the latest with him? Listen, Magomed Ankalaev, I'm going to say this publicly. He has seven week camps in Vegas. Five weeks of this seven weeks camp, he was doing only rehab with Heather and uh, Ryan uh, at the UFC. He didn't really, he only get to train three, three rounds, three weeks. And, uh, and this one thing, I think maybe it was not the greatest performance. I thought he completely won the fight. It wasn't even close, you know, uh, but he's a guy who stepped up for the company. He, he stepped up for the company and I feel he's a little bit, Nagy and the love he mm. deserved because I believe he could have pulled out and he could have screwed everything up. But he said, no, I'm not going to pull out. I'm not. The champ just got injured and pulled out. And that's one thing I'm trying to talk to, the, you know, to, to make that Hunter and, and this guy. He said, hey, this guy was injured. You know, mm. he did almost four weeks of, of physical therapy. He even trained, you know. And I feel right now he's, he's in a limbo. You know, of course, the fight I want, let Jamal Hill fight, fight uh, Yuri. And let him rematch this Polish power. You know what I'm saying? I think this Polish power is good. But I'm telling you something. He's near, not near good what Uncle Life is. A healthy Uncle Life will stop the Polish power in one and a half round. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uncle Life, I believe he's the best light heavyweight in the world. I believe he has so much potential. He has not even reached 60% of his potential. And I think, listen, I would love, you know, I will beg. I'll beg, because I don't beg much, make and the UFC and everybody to make this fight, you know, to, to make the, the Polish power fight. I think it makes sense, you know. I know they have other plans, you know, and listen, but Maga's going to fight anybody. It doesn't matter. If you think you're the best in the world, you have to fight everybody. And, you know, you know, and like, you know, like Omar now. Like, like, nobody want to fight Omar. You know, it's, it's crazy how, but I believe, I feel good about this one. Because I feel Dana, Sean, Hunter, and all those guys that are behind him, they see his mm -hmm. potential, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get to like what they do, and sometimes I don't like what they do. But with mm -hmm. Omar, I'm very pleased because they tried to put him in Marab fight. Marab is number one, yep. you know, because yep. they they believe Omar is the future of the division. Mm -hmm. They believe that. Even Henry Sahul said that. He said Henry, uh, Omar is the, the, the future of the division. I believe. That's the closest we're gonna get to Khabib. Umar. This is that's the closest we will get to Habib. The guy mm -hmm. doesn't get hit. He doesn't have phenomenal defense. And uh, we talk about self-discipline. There's nobody more disciplined than this young man in the whole entire sport. Nobody. And how about Sergey Pavlovich, who has kind of come out of nowhere over the last year? And uh, you know, it's kind of interesting that John Jones is saying, uh, you know, I, I fight. Steve Amiasic at the end of the year, and then I think I'm probably good, you know. Yeah. Good. Listen, listen. Sergei Pavlovich, he's a cold-blooded killer. Like, he, you know, his reach is long as John Jones. He's bigger than John Jones. He's bigger than Francis. You understand? Listen, you know, I think Francis left on the right time, too, because it wasn't, it wasn't getting easier. I still think Francis John Jones is an interesting fight. People think John Jones will run through Francis. I'll look too crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, can you imagine Sergey versus Francis in Ghana? It will never happen, but somebody going to sleep yeah. in the first 30 seconds of this fight. I don't care. You know, you know, <laughs> I feel I feel I feel Sergey man is he's the great white hope. He's the great white hope. He's the Rocky Marciano. You know, you know what I'm saying, you know, you know, he's the Rocky Marciano, he's he's the Russian uh concussion. You know, you can call him so many different names. And I'm telling you something, John Jones don't want this problem. He don't want this problem. For what, man? John Jones is arguably the greatest of all the time. You know, why you gotta fight this young guy who's 30 years old, 
who doesn't smoke, who doesn't drink, he doesn't, he, he sleep early, he doesn't party. And John Jones is, 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 is John Jones man is different. You know, he why he needs to go ahead and beat Stipe and land as the coach. Uh, you know, you have to give it to him, you know, and, and move on, you know. But uh, you know, fighting uh, Sergey, uh, I, I think that'll be a short night for John, you know, and, and, and if I part of John's team. And you have a you know a great coaches, Greg Jackson. They smart people. Why you fight mm-hmm. a guy who's two hundred sixty five pounds, pure muscles, uh, who have a wrestling background? By the way, people doesn't think he does. You see what he did to Curtis Blade. Curtis Blade is probably arguably the best heavyweight in the UFC, minus Francis Ngannou, arguably, yeah. right? Yeah. Stop this take down. And he knocked him out. He looked, he looked, he looked, he make him look like an average. And he's not average. And I believe it will be worse for John Jones. I think Sergey will knock him out in the first round. I, I, I believe, and no disrespect to John, to nobody. I believe Sergey Popovich will sleep John Jones in the first round. You know, uh, and, uh, you know, you can, Surreal Gun, you know, he's an athlete. He can compare Surreal Gun to, mm-hmm. to John, uh, to, to Sergey. He's a, Sergey Gun is, it's, I think this guy, he's not even reached 25% of his potential because I believe he's cooped up somewhere in France. And, uh, you know, but I believe if this guy gets like real training and real dreams, I think he can be a problem. But I think Sergey will knock him out too. He will get knocked out by Sergey in the first round also. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.